Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, austerity measures, economic deficit, banking bailouts, economic recession, and the national debt. Yes, the dreaded national debt. These are new terms we've been hearing in our vocabulary and daily life for many years now. And we've been hearing them for so long that we're sort of getting really sort of brainwashed into sort of uh, accepting these new terms as part of our lives. Yes, we are in debt. There has to be some cutbacks. And we are all in it together. But amongst all this kerfuffle, we as, as a nation seem to have lost sight of some of, some of the big questions that we need to be asking our so-called leaders and politicians. And I'm sure some of these big questions have crossed your mind also. Such as, where's it all gone? <laughs> Who do we owe this money to? That's a good one, isn't it? Who do we owe this money to? And what rate of interest do we pay? I want to know. This, I really get angry on this subject. It really drives me mad when I think about all the politicians talking about this debt, how we're all in it together. If we're all in it together, don't I or we have a right to know where our money's gone and who we owe this money to? Is it the Queen, the Pope, another foreign country, or bank, or banks? It's a baffling question. I've never ever had any economist or politician give an intelligible explanation of our current plight. Let me update you on the arithmetics of our national debt in terms of its breakneck speed of how rapidly it's rising. It will really shock you. I'll give you the ballpark figures. I won't give you the exact decimals, but it will illustrate the point of where we are at at this moment in time. It's rising by 5,000 pounds a second. It's rising by 300,000 pounds per minute. It's rising by 18 million pounds an hour. Yes, 18 million pounds an hour. And that leads to a staggering amount of 430 million pounds a day. Yes, a day. And it's projected that by 2014, and 2015 tax year, this national debt is going to rise to 1.4 trillion pounds. That truly is an unimaginable figure. Every time you turn on the news, it seems that companies are going bust. Banks need bailing out. Forget the banks, countries need bailing out now. Surely there must be somebody in the whole world who is sitting there in front of a computer screen, rubbing their hands with joy, <laughs> looking at their balance sheet. we just like to know who it is. <laughs> Do our Does it occur to our politicians to look at these finances and deal with them with a view to refinancing them, renegotiating the terms of these loans and the interest rates that we pay? I mean, we can do that with our personal finances, so why not with the national debt? The fact is, ladies and gentlemen, this issue has been shrouded in mystery, jargon, and technical complexity deliberately just to avoid the average man and woman out there from grasping the fact that a large amount of this money is owed to private banks. We talk about this vast amounts of money. Can you just try and comprehend what vast amounts of money is? I mean, let's try and comprehend what is money. Money is a non-existent theoretical force that never has, never does, and will never exist, except in theory on computer screens. We live in a world where people die and starve to death because they don't have enough digits on their computer screen. What a sad state of affairs. Money is just a concept. I'm just trying to illustrate a point to you. Pieces of paper, worthless really, just as worthless as this piece of paper. But let me illustrate a finer point. The fact is this is just has higher perceived value. 
compared to this worthless piece of paper. But look at these two notes. Almost identical in terms of size, print, design, amount of ink on them. Yet this is worth twice as much as this. But the fact is, they're still worthless pieces of paper. It's just a concept. It's a concept. Money really is a game. When you go to the bank to borrow some money, so let's say £50,000 for argument's sake, where do you think the bank gets that money from? Is it from their cash rolls? Is it from, some people think it's money from their shareholders? Some people think it's money from other banks? I wonder where they get it from. And some people think it's money that the bank has on reserve on deposits from savers. How, I'm sure most of you at some point or another may have been to the bank to get a loan on a mortgage or just a general sort of uh, loan. What happens is the bank manager going to the vaults, come out with a briefcase full of cash and say, would you like to count this and be on your way? Or if you're hired borrowing a bigger amount, bring a trolley out of the vaults, <laughs> would you like to load your boot up and uh, off you go? No. What they do is they just use the click of a mouse and a keyboard and add some digits into your account as credit which you start paying interest on from day one. The fact is, this money has just been created from fresh air and didn't exist in the first place. Banks, like governments, have the power to create money, yet the latter very rarely exercises this task and has been largely left to banks over the many decades to issue and print money. This process is called fractional reserving, and if you ever get a chance, do look it up because it will actually frighten you how the current monetary system works. We live in a society which is ex extremely burdened now, and until the, our government wrestles the control back from these banks, all talk of the sovereignty of parliament and democracy is futile because banks 